Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I have the incredible pleasure to welcome James Sweetman, and especially because James was one of my inspirations. And to, to make sure, James, I introduce you correctly, uh, I'll use my help. Okay. Uh, James Sweetman is a highly rated and well-respected motivational speaker, executive and life coach and author. He is a sought after expert in the fields of leadership and personal development. James is the author of five books, including two acclaimed novels, which I didn't know. It's a new thing for me. It's congratulations. It is fantastic. His blog, Next Steps, is read by thousands of subscribers in over 30 countries. He is the host of the very popular weekly podcast, Your Time with James Sweetman, which I highly personally recommend. And you can visit his website for more information. James, have I missed something? Not at all. I'm, I'm beginning to wonder who, who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's when you hear it read out like that, you know, there's, there's a lot to it. But then I've been doing this for 20 years, so it, it tends to be cumulative. Um, but interestingly, with the books, yeah, there's been five. I'm trying to think. Yeah, there's been five books, including an ebook, and I don't really count them no. sometimes. But um, but I'm in the midst of um, of writing the next one, um, really? which hopefully will be in the spring time. Yeah. W- would you be so kind, just in two words, um, to reveal a little bit of secret? What will be the book about? Sure. It's it's called Words to Inspire. So it's. It, it, it came about as a result of a blog article I did about 18 months ago, which was 50 things I know at 50 because I had turned 50. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it sort of developed out of that because I've been writing my blog since 2005 and, and I've written hundreds of articles and I write for several different magazines. So I sort of went back and I, I looked at a lot of the material I had, like there was about 800 articles that had been written and revisited some of them and then created some new ones. So this will be um, a compendium, I think is the word, of about 75 um, um, essays or standalone chapters, I should wow. say, on, on various different topics from life purpose, feeling lost, um, relationships, so many of the big themes that we deal with. But I, I'm writing it in such a way is that it's, it's very condensed as well. So mm-hmm. I, I like to think it's the sort of piece that if you are reading uh, a book, you know, you'd be underlining certain passages. And I only want this book to be like the underlined bits. I want it to be very tight and very edited. Um, and uh, and I'm enjoying the process of pulling it together. So fingers crossed, spring 2022. Wow, uh, it's it's incredible because I have to uh, say that inspired by you and ed- other authors in, in the field, I also try to put a book together. My will be first one. Uh, I might get some tips after our interview from you how to do it greatly. <laughs> we can do another one on, on writing. I think I, I think with, with, with writing, um, I think it was Maya Angelou who said, mm-hmm. you know, I think there was three components to it. You know, one, one, there's something that you want to communicate. You know, there's something mm-hmm. that you feel is of value that you want to communicate. There is an element of, of having some sort of written communication skill as well, mm-hmm. you know, so there is the skill of writing it. Um, but I think then she said the most important part of it is having the courage to actually write it. Yes, so, I already have two chapters, so it's a great start. That's more than the majority of people, Christoph. Once you have started, you can build momentum with it. Yeah. And, and it'll take on a life of its own. That's what I tend to find. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to say that you have so many great, valuable tips, skills and knowledge to share with others. And it was hard to choose which questions to ask. And uh, I would like to start from one of the most often frequently asked in in my relationships with my client. It's about self-confidence. How to build self-confidence. Sometimes, of course, we talk in a context interview very often. Yes. But if we can talk a little bit even outside the interview uh, setting. Sure. How vital is self-confidence and how we can build it? Sure, that's a great question and it's a great topic. And I would have to say it's one 
theme that runs through so much, much of my work, whether that's you know, working one-to-one with a client, helping them prepare for an interview, whether it's presentation skills, workshops, and, you know, people are terrified, you know, to deliver a presentation at the top of the room. Even if it's things like confidence, you know, to set yourself some goals or dreams and ambitions or, you know, the confidence to to, to create a best life, as it were. Um, so it's one of those, um, how would I say, it, concepts that often for people carries a huge amount of weight with it. Like it becomes this big holy grail. And I often say that if we're looking for more of anything, you know, it's useful to break it down and to see, well, what is it for us? And and we can all define confidence in different ways. For me, the clue is in the word itself, you know, from the Latin confidus, meaning with faith. So self-confidence with faith in self. One of the things that I tend to find when we have the perception that we're lacking self-confidence, because we're usually only thinking that we lack it, um, is that we put a lot of emphasis on how we think other people might be viewing us. So I often Mm -hmm. say it's about putting the self back into self-confidence and self-referencing. But if if we look at it, particularly, say, with interviews or presentations, Christoph, um, I think they're heightened scenarios. It's a bit like any sense of lack of confidence or anxiousness or nervousness or worry or whatever phrase we put on it you know it's magnified when we're when we're going to an interview or when we find ourselves having to deliver a presentation but as i as i always say to groups and, and people i work with you know if you're feeling a little bit you know the hands are a bit shaky and you're, you're you know you can feel the your heart beating in your chest and all of the symptoms of it um it means you care you know it means you care if if you didn't care Yes, you may not feel nervous and anxious, uh, but you would also be complacent. And that's Mm -hmm. always something to avoid, particularly in a a professional context. Um, For me, before I share a few more, maybe five tips to boost (laughs) self-confidence, because I know that's always of benefit to to, to listeners. Um, um, Again, going back to the, the thinking that confidence is such a big topic, most of the time, how would I say it? You know, if, if you're thinking about learning to drive a car for the first time, you're not confident getting behind the wheel, you know, Absolutely. unless you're a joyrider or something, you know, it, it's outside of comfort zone. Confidence only comes when you have pushed comfort zone and you've sort of earned and deserved the right to feel a bit more confidence and the practice that comes with, in this case, driving a car. That would be mm-hmm. similar to an interview. You know, if you haven't done an interview in 10 years, you're certainly not going to be confident going into it because it's outside a comfort zone and you're emotionally invested like it's important to you if you were doing two interviews a week you would you, you would begin to to build momentum with yeah it. so what i always say to people when it's um you know when they feel they're lacking confidence forget confidence reach for calmness and courage instead they're the bridging qualities And ironically, that's really what we're looking for. So if someone is nervous and anxious going to an interview, what they're really looking for is to feel calmer. It's not confidence. It's to feel calmer. And if we combine a sense of calmness um, with that courage, like courage is something we can connect with because we will know in the past times when we were a little bit brave, even though we were a little bit scared and we acted anyway. And those two are the handrails for self-confidence as I would see it. Um, And it's what I apply myself. Now, there's a few more tips I can share as well, but sometimes just just, just playing around a little with the concept of self-confidence, we can make it a little bit more more bite-sized. Feel free to join our LinkedIn group. Hopefully I will see you soon. Thank you.